Shut up and sit down. Good. Good. I like it. I like it a lot. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Get <laughs> breathy. Get <laughs> breathy. Very breathy. Welcome to Sarge Approved. I'm Sarge, and I'm here with Frenzy. Hi. And we got a guest host this evening, a friend of the show, friend of ours, Mr. Larry Roberts, host of Accidentally the Whole Tip. What's happening? How's it going, man? Welcome back. Uh, another oh, exciting. Larry. What is this Thursday? Yeah. I have no idea. It's Thursday. Yeah, I fucking <laughs> shattered a wisdom tooth today, so that's gonna be fucking great. Oh. Can't wait to go up tomorrow. I got a, I got an oral consultation, and I'm kind of wondering, you know, what what are they gonna consult? I don't know. I don't know. It just seems Const- like it's gonna, pretty. They prescribe dry. you some pain is what they're gonna do. Yeah, yeah probably. So we'll we see what happens. We have a guest, and our guest is comedian Sam Tripoli. How's it going, Sam? Uh- Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for having me on the show. Super excited. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for joining us. us. Yeah, magic of Skype. Yes, it's a beautiful thing. It's Pretty it cool. Yeah, sounds great. Not just for webcaming. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, where are you calling us? Coming to us from tonight, Sam? Uh, La La Land, Los Angeles. Hello. Mm. Yes. La La Land. And, uh, yes, I was actually. I'm actually one block from where they have the Oscars. Okay. And yeah, so every year, right, right around this time, my my neighborhood just becomes packed with limousines. And yeah, we're one block away from the debauchery, from the, the diabolic, the, what's it called? The, uh, the uh, Warren Beatty's crash and burn. Right. Do you Definitely. stand outside in the yard and like around the street and grill and have beers and stuff? Ooh, tailgate. Yeah, I try to get tailgate the, the Oscars. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> I totally we would just, do that. I bring out my George Foreman cooker and I make burgers for all the uh, <laughs> Armenian limo drivers. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> it's a tradition like no other. Yeah, you never know when you're going to need one of those guys to come swoop you up somewhere. You know? Yeah, my people. I mm. just I give out the bro and they all show up. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> Let's pause for a second so we can hear a word from our sponsor. Shut up! Hey, this is Frenzy here to talk to you about National Survival Center. This is the place where you can purchase all of your outdoor camping gear and supplies, survival kits, disaster preparedness supplies, bug out bags, and even survival food. All with some of the lowest prices on the internet and free shipping on almost everything. You can depend on National Survival Center to provide you with the highest quality gear paired with superior customer service. And when you purchase your gear from National Survival Center, you're not only getting a great product, but you're receiving products that have all been hand tested to ensure that they'll be reliable, durable, and that they'll function properly. So whether you need some gear for a family camping adventure or maybe you want to stock up for the zombie apocalypse, National Survival Center can provide you with the quality products you're looking for. You can find them at www.nationalsurvivalcenter.com or www.survivedontsuffer.com. Either way, don't suffer. Make sure you survive. I get a feeling there's going to be a riot. I don't read the newspapers because they all have ugly prints. That's good. Larry's coming to us from Texas. Snap. Howdy. Howdy. I love Texas. I love Texas. Dude, if you love it so much, you need to come with Joe in, like, what is it, fucking May? Yeah, yeah, man, I'd love to come. I haven't played Texas in fucking forever. It just, I don't know, man. I love being out there. I love talking shit. I have actually, the last time I performed, it's been, I mean, dude, it's been forever since I've been out there. And the last time I was there, it's a really funny story. I was playing the Addison Improv, and I get, I, I, I'm getting ready to go up, and they're like, you know, Carlos Mencia might show up. He might show up. We all know. And I'm like, fuck, man. This guy bumps me everywhere. He used to just bum me all the time <laughs> and, and at the comedy store. I'm like, fuck this man. He just shows up everywhere. He's like Beetlejuice. So... <laughs> 
I'm just hanging out there like, we don't even know if he's showing up. Suddenly I see little uh, Brad Williams waddle in. And I'm like, hey, Brad. I'm like, ah, fuck. That means he's here. And, like, Brad's a good guy. Brad has nothing to do with it. He just was getting stage time at the time. So Carlos comes in and he, like, he, he says hi to everybody, but he doesn't even look me in the eye when he shakes my hand. I'm like, ah, oh, this is not a good sign. So I had a rule that if Carlos did over 30 minutes, I wouldn't go up because anything over 30 minutes to me is a is a um, a headliner spot. So I'm like, if he does over a second over 30, I'm not going up. I mean, and he's trying to murder the room. I mean, dude, murder the room. I mean, just going for blood. And I'm like, dude, if he goes over 30 minutes, I'm like going up. He gets off at 29 minutes. 29 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> he gets off stage. And I was like, oh, I guess I got to go up. And he's like, okay, you guys, thank you so much. And the place goes fucking nuts. And he's like, are you ready for your final comic? And the whole room just collectively goes, oh. Like somebody has to follow this guy. And it was me. And like I remember I just got tunnel vision at that point. I'm like, fuck, I'm the guy who's going to follow this. And he introduces me, and he does the most chicken shit thing I've ever seen anybody ever do. He introduces me, and he just runs off stage, and there's a rule in comedy that you never leave the stage empty, ever. Right. Once the show's going, you hand it off to someone else, shake their hand, you do whatever, but there's someone else on stage, and that fucking motherfucker runs off stage, doesn't even (laughs) shake my hand, doesn't even thank me for, like, you know... Letting him go on my night, and he just goes. And I remember they got really quiet as I walked up, and I just had this stupid joke I drop. And man, I dropped the line, and the place just explodes. And I just kill for forty five minutes. I kill, I kill, and uh, it was such an amazing night. So afterwards, if you ever played the ass in improv, you know it's next to this piano bar. Yep. And I go there, and everybody's there, like you crushed after and you did it, and you buy me shots. I got so shit faced that I just like fucking just flamed through. I just d- had the worst set of my fucking life in the 11 o'clock show because why is there 11 o'clock show? There's no reason for it. And I just shit the bed so bad. Like the staff brought their friends, and I just could barely stand up. But it was just like this insane night. It's like he used to always follow me. And the thing about Following Carlos Mencia, he's not hard to follow because people are tired of being yelled at at that moment. But they just, <laughs> you know, it's just like you can't do your good shit because you're afraid he's just going to jack it. So right, you just got to right. do fucking kind of crowd work and you hope they just go with it. But, yeah, man, I love Texas. I'm trying to get out there now. I'm trying to get to Houston. I just love Texas. I just want to get out there, man. I play mostly Southwest and the Southeast. I don't get to Texas as much as I'd like to, which I'm, you know. I just would like to be out there, yeah. Well, you know, Tony came out just a couple of months ago, and actually, Kill Tony came out. Uh, I think it was December. Yeah, and they did their thing, and uh, I actually I went up I went up with uh, with Tony and, and Brian, and they annihilated me for I don't know about twelve thirteen minutes. So it was probably the worst best moment of my life. <laughs> it's a weird situation. It's like kind of cool because you're on there, but then you have these two fucking knuckleheads ripping you to shreds. You know, when I do it, I try to give some serious advice. I understand there's a certain amount of entertainment going on that you have to kind of entertain. But whenever I do Kill Tony, I'm doing it in two weeks again. I have to, um, I try to give some advice, you know, on what sure. comedy is and kind of how it is. And my biggest thing is you just got to focus what you're trying to say. And you have to really, really fuck, cut the fat, man. That's a problem in, with young comics. They kind of don't have a specific point they're trying to make, and they just meander all over the place with useless details. And the only thing they want is what's pertinent to them understanding your punchline. And it's very hard for people to understand that first because they want to fill 10 minutes. But it's better to have a killer five than an okay 10. Sure. Yeah. Well, and being able to piece all that together so it flows nicely so it doesn't sound like you're just reading off a bunch of uh, uh, lines that you memorized. Yeah, I mean, the hardest thing about it, it's easier said than done because it takes very long to understand that. It's like your act has to be living. Like I can't express it enough how important it is to be in the moment of anything. Like slow down and be in the moment. And like if it's not going good, 
the best thing you could say is that it's not going good, Mm -hmm. you know, and just like really embrace that you're eating a dog's dick on stage (laughs) instead of just hurrying (laughs) up and and flying through the whole act and just trying to, if you you hit them with more punchlines, it's going to go better. It's actually the calmer you are with them, the more they are likely to come on your side. It's just, it's all psychological Jedi night shit, you know, Jedi fucking shit, which is this movie that I'm in called Dying Laughing. It's all about the art of stand-up, the, how to write a joke and all that shit. Some people think it's a little bit of inside baseball, but I think it's the best doc on stand-up comedy. It's in a, it's in a bunch of movie theaters. You can also get on any video on demand, Dying Laugh. It's really good, dude. Comedy is purely a result of your ability to withstand self-torture. A lot of comedians just want laugh, 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 laugh. I like laugh, boo, laugh. <gasps> when you walk out on stage, the only thing you can do is grab the reins and just try to ride it. They'll know when it's a set joke and they'll know when it's coming from your heart. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing stand-up comedy. You are never exempt from a bad night. See, when you heckle me, you're trying to hurt my feelings. Just know I'm dead on the inside. It's definitely not, like, a great way to invest in your romantic life. There's got to be a secret, right? Well, Kevin, I didn't see it. I'm like, see what? What are you, what are you talking about? Potential. I don't think you have what it takes to be a comedian. I said, God damn. <laughs> to my face? Next! Not doing well as a comedian is an existential crisis. I've had 500 people in a room, and it's been going so badly that at the back of the room, I heard... We live for the thirst of laugh at us. When you take that from us, you know, a little bit of us dies. I'm telling them something that really happened to me to try to get out of someone wanting to fight me right now. There's a guy who punched me on stage. And they literally uh, threw chairs at you. People have no filter. When I was younger, it used to just literally, uh, it would kill me. And now I'm able to uh, float through it now because uh, I have money. <laughs> I have money. I'm very famous. All the heralding, the awarding, the trumpeting, the lauding, who cares? That laugh is better than any trophy, and that's what I live for. Who, uh, who put that together? Who, who directed it and, and put that These two together? fucking Brits, this guy named Paul Too Good uh, out of uh, England, they did The Art of Rap. That was really good. And they just, like, put together, and it's just, like, it's all heavy hitters, too, dude. It's, like, all heavy hitters, and somehow I was able to make it in there. And it's it's really good. Talks about bomb, being on the road, bombing, how to deal with hecklers, all this shit. It's just, it's really interesting yeah. shit, if, especially if you're a comic, dude. It's really interesting shit. Where can yeah, you I'm definitely going to check it out. Yeah, where can you find that? Uh, you can just go on, it's on iTunes, it's on Google Play, it's on Amazon, it's on Video On Demand. You can go pretty much anywhere, and I think it's going to, after about a couple months, it's going to be on Netflix after that. So, Beautiful. I mean, like, dude, it's gorgeous. And If you go to Sam, youtube.com backslash Sam Triple, you can see a trailer for it that I'm in. So, it's, it's, it's just great. It's a lot of fun. Sam Comedy is the best craziest fucking thing you can get into it's it's (laughs) it's so much like porn stars and comedians have so much in common they're almost the same thing if i listed the characteristics of a comedian and a characteristic of a porn star you'd be amazed how similar they are um some kind of fucked up childhood usually right yeah for the most trailer park no, yeah, seriously we're all trailer park motherfuckers they all come from the trailer park really guys like like Nick Kroll, dude, who I consider, I don't think he gets enough credit for how fucking lethal that dude is. Like that guy, that guy is the funniest dude. I, I mean, like the first, the first and second season of the Nick Kroll show, I would put up against 
any sketch show, including the Dave, the uh, you know, the Dave Chappelle show. I mean, oh, like it was so. Fu- yeah, I would. <laughs> but it fits into my. It was. It fits into my wheelhouse. Yeah. But I, I mean, like he's his parents are billionaires, so it's like everybody's that Crystal Lee, a great example. Like comes from like a fucking pretty good family, but that guy fucking wrecks rooms. Like I mean, like it's you never know, dude. It's just like. But the one thing everybody has is just like you're just a square you're just a a square peg trying to get in a round hole and you got to kind of f- try to figure out how to f- how to maneuver through life, you know? And that's what comics are really good at. You know, and it's kind of weird to me though at the same time because a lot of comics are are reclusive. But then at the same time you have to get on stage and expose your deepest darkest fears and some of your deepest darkest secrets. At the same time, oh, while dude. still feeling re- being reclusive. Oh well, I have crippling social anxiety, dude. Crippling social anxiety. <laughs> like I cannot hang out. I got you know. That's why I used to party pretty hard back in the day. You know, nothing makes you want to meet and greet and shake hands and kiss babies more than cocaine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do fucking Powder. jacker, get out there, get fucking Powder weird. And, right? Meet some girls. I don't know what it is about cokes. But Chicks will light, let you light them up on cocaine. I don't know what it is. They just <laughs> like to get fucking weird. And you combine that with the fact that, you know, you do a line of coke, you feel like you're like Motley Crue in that Girls, Girls, Girls video where they're walking through the strip bar <laughs> and everybody's trying to jock their dick. And you're like, I'm the fucking golden god. And that's, you know, but that's like fucking... That's just what Coke does, and that's why no, a lot it, of comics are, are get drug problems because they do have some weirdness. But then there's the other side, which is the comics who make business decisions, who like decide they're going to do do this like kind of clean comedy or corporate comedy, and, or like what I'm what, what I'm seeing a lot of right now is pop comedy, a lot of pop comedy in which they're kind of talking about shit we've all heard before, or they take very hacky takes on. Like uh, maybe a real event in their life, but it's the hackiest take possible. You know, behind every pop song, there's something that happened. And that's why it inspired the song. But it's such a ha- hacky take on a song and uh, on that event that it becomes a pop song. And those people make business decisions and they grow up and they're fucking miserable people. And they're all in therapy, you know. So it's like, what's the answer? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So are we going to start getting like Millie, Millie Vanilli kind of style comedians, these these corporate constructed comedians that are just – Well, I mean <laughs> well, I mean, like you've seen it jokes. right now. You're just seeing the, the – that looks – looks are – I mean if you look at a lot of the comedians – I'm like, listen, dude. Whatever it takes to make it in business, fucking do it, man. Whatever you got to fucking do. Short of stealing from people, do what you got to fucking do, man. You know? That's the only thing. Don't or what? I mean, hey, dude, yeah, if that's what, hey, if that is in your wheelhouse, <laughs> there's a fucking gay mafia in Hollywood that if you're willing to fucking blow somebody, some shit might happen. Listen, whatever it takes. If I was a chick, I'd be fucking selling my pussy to the fucking highest bidder. I'd be like an auctioneer with my snatch. Be like five, 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 four, 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 three hundred, three hundred, two hundred. You know? I've said that my whole life. I swear to God, I always said that if I had a vagina, I'd rule the fucking world. And I, I firmly believe like, that. I, dude, I would just be. I would, dude. Who wants to fuck their way to the middle? I don't fucking get that shit. I would. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's like you gotta do, but you know, I, I, I just see the point now where I, like I can tell somebody's act as they're walking to stage. Yes, I've been doing comedy for two decades, but. I can I know what so, someone's going to talk about walking on stage. I now watch like everything in comedy now is like, guys, why do we do this? Girls, why do you do this, guys? And it's just it's so annoying to me. Like my new album that's coming out is called The Diabolical. Um, it's a two disc CD, two album CD. The first album is called The Diabolical. It's a storytelling podcast. I tell a story about. Um, being on the run from police helicopters and getting away. And then uh, I was hired to do a fundraiser for some rednecks who wanted to build a spaceship to get to space and what that was about. <laughs> and then the second album is called Friday Night Late Show. And it's a uh, 
I just record this set where like the crowd is so drunk and sloppy at the Sacramento punchline that fucking, you know, five minutes in, I realize this is an unrecordable set and I just start just dropping hammer on drunk people. And it's like an hour of me just fighting drunks the whole time. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so yeah, that comes out in the 17th. You can pre-order that right now on iTunes. Just look, put in Sam Tripoli, look for the smiling baby it's two disc CD for the price of one. So, yeah, See, I just think I, be, I get called old school a lot, which is really weird. In what way? You know. Well, I don't know. I'm trying to, like, when I was young, I got called too dirty. I think people try to come up with ways to explain why your their, their comedy is better than your comedy. And they have to have an explanation for it than just accepting that everybody's different, man. Have a good time. So now I get told I, I'm old school, which I think means I have punchlines in my comedy now. I have a I have a punchline <laughs> to laugh at, and I don't know if that's as prevalent bef- now. So it's interesting. It's just interesting. You know, one of the things I see in the Dallas Fort Worth comedy scene, if you want to call it that, you know, Addison's huge. Uh, Arlington is blowing up. They have an, uh, an improv there, and Hyenas is making a pretty good impact in the area too. And that's where Tony took uh, Kill Tony. But one of the requirements at Hyenas is, is that you have a clean set. Um, is, is that common? Um, there, I think that was very common before. There's only one comedy club in L.A. that is a clean comedy club, and that is the Comedy Magic Club. Uh, there, was a co- there was a couple comedy clubs who tried to make clean comedy, fun, but it just doesn't, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It's not There's something wrong about that. Like that just shouldn't be. I feel like it's not the same oh, hey, experience. Friend. Hi. <laughs> um, you don't think that I don't think it should be clean. Like usually when they say clean, they don't really mean clean. Cause I have friends of mine like John Caparillo who drops F bombs every other word. It's just, it's not clean. It's safe. What's safe comedy, you know, and I could talk about puppies and people would still think, you know, yeah, I'm a right. fucking bad man. <laughs> um, you know, so it's it's like, what is it? I think it should just be funny. Here's the problem with comedy clubs. Here's the problem with comedy clubs is that they're the only form of entertainment that runs away from the train wreck model of promotion that all other entertainment does. Uh, how crazy, outlandish, weird, offensive, edgy can you be to get people to come look at your product? Every other form does it, whether it's music, television, movies, everything. But stand-up comedy clubs go the opposite way. They just want to get cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. And, and what happens is eventually they just have to paper the room, which is the, uh, the suicide note, note of comedy. When you start papering your room all the time, your club is co- coming to an end because that means – People don't want to pay for your product. Instead, it should be like, hey, dude, have some crazy shit go on. People want to come see it. That's right. all it is. What's the There's reasoning, reason. though? Why, but why do you feel like they're, like they're going the other way where they're trying to be more safe? Well, I wouldn't say it's going the other way. I would say it staying that way okay. is because – a comedy club's owners are owned by business people, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, to be a business person, the business model is keep it safe and make other people happy. But that's not what entertainment does. Entertainment is about moving you and getting you going. And yes, you know, for every Taylor Swift you have, you know, you've got to have a Kanye West who's fucking going nuts on stage and. That's why people go to see him just to see the train wreck that's going to happen. Right. You know, you see it in everything. Like, there's a reason fucking Ozzy Osbourne, Ozzy Osbourne bit a bat's head off. It wasn't because he wanted to bite a bat's. It's like people start talking about and then they're going to show up and see, hey, is he going to bite a bat's head off today? You know, like, that's what you got to do. But comedy clubs have gone the, gone the opposite way where it's like, listen, man. People want to get moved. They want to see crazy shit. And just because five people in a show where there's 300 or 350 in there complain doesn't mean everybody got – it doesn't mean five people are fucking children and think that the world should revolve around fucking them. Yeah, so yep. you think they're trying to have this this good business model where it's like 
guest service or customer service and like if five people are pissed off then we're gonna try and change and make we want to make everybody happy basically and yeah have this it's business not real that, that doesn't yeah that's dumb i agree you shouldn't be able to own a comedy club unless you're like a legitimate fan of comedy or a former comedian current comedian you, you know <laughs> well i, mean? I find that even foreign com- uh, former comedians they get they get a club and then they just really go hard on business and then she's like mm. you're like and it's just weird. I mean, like comedy club owners do the they're, they're doing the best they can. Some are cool, some are not cool. It's it's like anything in the world, man. There's some very cool comedy club owners out there, you know, like mm-hmm. Tammy Bronson who owns all the House of Comedies. Like she's wonderful. Like I literally did this club in Edmonton, uh, Canada. I got off stage twice, and they pulled me aside. The club owners were like. Uh, can you get dirtier? I've never had that in my life. <laughs> and like, awesome. oh, can you filth it up? So the next show, I'm just jumping on stage, like yelling, hey, can I eat your asshole? That's all I'm yelling at people. <laughs> can I eat your ass? I get off stage. The, the, the staff's like, that was much better. I'm like, what? <laughs> They're like, but you could have gone a little further if you wanted to. Yeah. We would have been cool with it. Just, I just like, at the end of the day, is like, at the end of the day, is like, did the majority of the people be entertained? Like you just can't yell and scream at people. There has to be a degree of entertainment, but it's like, did people get moved, man? Did people, did people have a good time? If most of the people had a good time, then that's a good show. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like right. a lot of these road, co- a lot of these co- comic clubs on the road, they just put safe comics up and then they wonder why nobody buy t- buys tickets. And it's yeah. just like, cause people want to get moved, man. It's it, but it's a great time to be in comedy too because you could literally create your own following, and it's wonderful. Look at what yeah. you guys are doing, man! You guys have a very successful podcast. You know, I have a podcast called Punch Drunk Sports. We've been doing it for about five years, <clears throat> and it's got a huge following. And now I I got this new podcast called Tin Foil Hat, and it's a uh, conspiracy podcast. And man, people are just Nice. fucking flocking to it and it's a lot of fucking fun and that's what you gotta out. do yeah dude yeah i love it just <laughs> and, shape-shifting lizard people man <laughs> and you can do whatever the fuck you want yeah if you just work hard there's a crowd out there for yeah. you. you just gotta work hard and hustle and mm-hmm. it's fun dude i mean i got a blessed life dude i'm a stand-up comic i tell dick jokes for a living you yeah. know yeah you i got, love it you got him you got uh, uh uh the dream job that's for sure but how many how many podcasts you got going now because you've you had other ones before tinfoil hat and um what was the other one uh, well i had a uh i had i had a, a the naughty show which was a podcast that kind of like dealt with just the crazier side of life we you know We'd have weed sponsors. We were talking about weed. This was like a couple of years ago when that was a little crazier. Yeah. Uh, you know, then we'd have porn stars on and, you know, cross dressers on and, and, and the fucking midgets on and whatever weird shit you could do. And then we'd have Clownvis come on. This porn star started crying because she was afraid of clowns. And it was like <laughs> so much fucking fun. Yeah. But you just. You just hit a place where you're like, we've talked to all the porn stars, we've talked to all the trannies, we've talked to all the midgets, we're kind of over it. So I kind of went my own way, and, you know, Gareth Reynolds, who's on the dollop, he was on that. So, you know, we had a good time, and it was fun. So then I started doing the, uh, then I had a storytelling podcast, and that was fun, but me and the guy who did it just, he went crazy. So life's too short to move, work with crazy people. So you just move on from that. And now, so I do Punch Drunk Sports with Jason Tebow and Ari Shafir. And then I do my own punch. I do my own conspiracy podcast. But also on that feed, I put out a rant podcast where I do an hour of ranting by myself. Oh, beautiful. Mm. <laughs> just random, random shit, whatever comes to your mind. Or do you got stuff pre-planned? That it's like the, well, that really grinds my gears <laughs> from Family Guy. Right. <laughs> what I do is I basically every day I write down something that drove me crazy that day. And at the end on Sunday night, I put it all together and I break each thing down into three talking points. And then I just riff for an hour on what pissed me off. And then Monday morning I put it out and people listen to it. They like it. If they don't, they don't. I just enjoy it. It helps me write. You know, when I'm always ranting, you know, I do it on my YouTube channel now, like, YouTube.com backslash Sam Triple. I just started it. 
I only have a couple hundred followers on the uh, subscribers, but every day it gets more and more. So, you know, I just enjoy ranting. I just, I love it. I have a show called The Rant of Tours, and it's basically a rant live show where people rant on shit. And it's fun. <laughs> what's, what's it called, the one where you rant for an hour? It's called Safe Space. Safe Space. Okay. I've heard of that mm-hmm. one. I have too. I haven't had a chance to check it out yet. <laughs> if you just go to soundcloud.com backslash Sam Tripoli, you know, you'll find all, you'll find tinfoil hat and uh, safe space. Beautiful. Okay. All the things that we need <laughs> so, to look up. So, yeah. So, Sam, yeah. how hard do you find it to, to launch a new show and to generate a following for that new podcast? And I, I kind of got a reason to ask that because my show accidentally the whole tip uh, is coming up on its 100th episode in two weeks. And along the same lines as your previous show with the strippers and the midgets and the midget strippers and, and, and all that fun stuff, we, we, we followed that same path. And I'm wondering, you know, have we reached that? Once we he, hit that 100 milestone, have we reached it? And maybe is it time to go a different direction? But at the same time, I go, man, if I've put all this energy into this and I've built it up. And we've done 100 fucking episodes. Why start over? Well, I mean, the question is, uh, uh, do you enjoy doing it? Of course. So, I mean, you should do it until you don't enjoy doing it anymore. You should do it until it's no longer fun and it's work. If you have tapped out or anything, that's something else. But maybe you can expand it into other things. Why does it have to be like midget stripper tranny people? Maybe it could be in the other stuff. And that's kind of why I, I have different names for all these different podcasts so people can know, like, Oh, safe space. He's ranting here. Oh, tinfoil hat. He's discussing, you know, conspiracy theories. Like I, you know, punch drunk is about sports. So they know what I'm going to be talking about, but maybe you can expand it. It's, you know, it's just like, is it getting what you want from it? Are you, are you getting numbers? Are your numbers going big? Are you getting sponsors on it? Is it helping? You know, because here's what's something. Bert Kreischer. I was, I, I, I was at a, uh, the all things comedy, uh, uh, kind of, um, they just moved, they just signed a deal with a uh, big production company. So they're having a big launch party. And I was talking to Bert Kreischer and he goes, Hey man, I, I uh, got offered a couple TV shows. I turned down cause I'm just focusing on my podcast. And that's kind of what Tom Segura told him. She goes, just focus on the podcast. And I kind of resonated with me and, uh, podcasting, man, it's like, yeah, there's a million of them, but they're not all produce that well mm-hmm. so it's like if you really work hard you put things right here's the advice i have to, i would say just try to get famous people on your podcast that's really all you gotta do you get one <laughs> the great example is uh dean del rey this guy is the best he, uh, he should write a book on how to grow your career because he didn't start comedy till he's like 43 he's like 50 now and he's got a, a lot of great shit going on but that guy just you know, he just he would hit people up constantly on it on Twitter. Hey, do my do my because he's got a music podcast. He's always like, hit me up, hit me up, hit me up, hit me up. Come do my podcast. And he'd hit up all these famous people. And eventually they would all be like, fine, I'll do your fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I kind of had, feel, go ahead. Go I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, or, I kind of feel like a dick sometimes doing that because I mean, dude, it was just a couple weeks ago. Because Listen. Brian, Brian, and Joe were were fucking venting like motherfuckers, going, "That's the worst thing I can ever ask anybody." Hey man, you want to do my podcast? Hey man, you want to we don't do my podcast? So I'm like, Dude, "Fuck!" I love Brian with all my heart. Well, he got I drunk as him. fuck at my show and ruined it for me. I'm just going to tell you, he, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, I love him all my heart. The notion that he doesn't ask people to do his podcast is retarded. He totally asked people to do his podcast. They all asked people to. Now, Rogan might have a booker who asked people. I, Rogan's is a fucking sum with a gravitational force. Everybody wants to do it. Oh, of course. So you got you to gotta kind of take him out of the equation. But, dude, you have to ask people to do your podcast. All I can ever say, dude, is this. Do not feel bad to ask for help. If I could change anything about myself, it'd be like, don't feel like an asshole at, at asking for help because it's not – it's what you do. The difference between people who made it and the difference who people did – and this is my God honest belief being in L.A. is the people who made it asked for help, didn't weren't afraid to ask for people to give them – and nobody made it without help. Nobody. Nobody sure. made it without a little help. 
I yeah. mean, like Tony, look at Tony, <laughs> Joe Rogan, me, and, and Jeffrey Ross. Now, granted, the other guys are multimillionaires, but the point is, it's like, you know, he, he would always ask me to take him on the road, take him on the road, show him how to do comedy, talk about comedy. That's what you got to do, man. That's what yeah, you got to do. You're in the click. You're in the click, man. You're in the, the Rogan, the Joey Diaz, Lee Syatt. You're you're you know you're in the click with those guys and it's it's fucking awesome. And yeah, it, being somebody yeah. on the outside looking in, I go, God damn, that has got to be the greatest fucking life to be in that click. I, I understand what you're saying. So what's the what's the uh, options? Are you going to move out here? Uh, Are I, you moving? I, 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 yeah, no, you know, I'm a tw- I'm a twenty year yes. <laughs> hey Larry, what? Uh, I thought you were interrupting me. I'm sorry. Am I taking over your show? No, uh, no, I'll... go. I was asking. Now you're gonna move out there? <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. You know, there's very little things holding me here other than my wife, and she'd go too in a heartbeat. So, but uh, I'm 44. You know, I mean, I've got a 20 year corporate career underneath me. I'm not, yeah. not overly happy with the 20 year corporate career, but don't tell anybody that. Um, but I you mean, know, I'm, I'm you're I'm just a... on a podcast. That's all. Yeah, I'm just on some shitty podcast that's going to be broadcast across the whole world. You know, Yeah, I mean, everybody's listening. That's yeah, you got millions and millions of listeners going out, out right now. Hey, Larry, I think you're, what you can do to try and solve your guest situation is just ask. If they say no, well, they're going to say I'm no. Gonna, if they say yes, yeah, then they say yes. Yeah, I was going to say, you need to have a frenzy uh, uh, on your on your team. I don't doubt it. Frenzy, we'll talk after the show. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you going to steal her away from me? <laughs> yeah. You get a hot chick to be the catnip, and then it fucking everybody slips in. That's exactly how it goes. Like, hot chicks, are, it's so interesting how hot chicks and, like, celebrities are almost on the same level. Like, if you're on Twitter, yeah. and you see, like, a, a celebrity with a fucking ver- uh, verifying them, right? And they're verified. You're like, oh, sweet. This person's kind of famous. They follow me. That's the same thing when you get a super hot chick and she doesn't turn out to be a porn bot. You're like, holy shit. It's yeah. the same kind of happiness. <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, I think funny. they're all porn bots, though. I'm fine with porn bots. If it wasn't for porn bots, I wouldn't get any retweets. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, you've had uh, quite a, quite a bit of success with your podcast so far. Well, I mean, it's, it's been it's very well produced. Well, I'll take the credit for that. Yeah, it is well produced. But no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I mean it's home produced. I got a home studio. I, I, I launched the studio to do voiceover work and fell in love with podcasting. I said, "Fuck that voiceover stuff. I'm going to do podcasting." Okay. And, uh, so now I've been doing it for a year and a half, and I've tried some internet radio, blah blah blah. But uh, I mean, I'm just in love with the whole podcasting genre. Um, I'm that's a guy great. That I've always had a mouth on me, and I've always had a foul mouth on me ever since I was just a pup. And I finally found a venue where I can talk about whatever I want and say whatever I want with minimal repercussions. So what's the problem? I, God, I just don't have any talent, I guess. I don't, I don't know. So, I mean, but is there any issues or, like, things are good or are you not? Are you... Well, things are good, but they're not great, right? And, uh, I mean, I've been doing some, had some, and, man, I'm just spilling my guts here to Sarge. I'm sorry, Sarge. Oh. Um, you know, I've had some consultants hit me up. I have Lee Syed. As, I've hired Lee Syed as a consultant on, on the, the down and dirty side. And then I okay. hired a, a high-end, uh, super clean uh, pro- uh, podcast producer that speaks at podcast movement and blah, blah, blah. And I was trying to merge the two, and that's just that's as, as of recently. I mean, Lee and I have been talking back and forth now for about three. Lee's weeks. great. Yeah, Lee's he is great. You can get him sober. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Lee. Well, he works with Joey Diaz. Man. I know, right? You know, I'm like, hey. that's I've been there where he's just like a super high meat log. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a blast. I mean, I, and uh, I'm trying to fill in the holes. I really am. I'm trying to fill in the holes to take it to the next level. Uh, just like um, Sergeant and Frenzy are doing, and, and it looks like they're doing great by getting guests like yourself on their show. Well, then you should do that, too. Larry, I, I'm already going to tell you, I know where this is coming from, I feel like a little bit, is because you, you got bit by having the guest bug. You like having the you like guests. You like oh, having the bug, guest yeah. situation. Like That has kind of made you start thinking, like, eh, maybe well, I can and, and, uh, do honestly, something but, with that. Well, that would be great because honestly, what I've done on my show as of the last last weekend, as a matter of fact, I went and looked back at the last fifty episodes, and I said, "All right, what do we do on these twenty five, and what do we do on these twenty five, and what did we do different?" 
And when we had guests, we did even even better. Mm-hmm. And then we got the cocky bug going, oh, well, me and Jay, we can take this train wherever we want, right? And uh, we started to see Listen, the Listen, dude, there's only one group of people. There's only one guy that could do fucking it all on his own. That's Bill Burr. And he's oh, just... No. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's like he just, he just like he's just the only guy, you know, and you'd like to be that dude, but it's just he's the only guy that I know that can do a podcast all by himself and people just go crazy for. I, I don't just, disagree. Yeah. You know? I think so. I think with the I have, podcast I have a guest. you I have a co host though. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, you have I'll a co yeah. No, I was just saying with podcasting and your specific podcast, I think it's important to have kind of your kind of your mission, I guess is what we would call it here at Sarge Approved, but kind of your purpose and what you're trying to accomplish and do and whatever that is, what, whatever message you're trying to send, because then you can build upon that and make that really strong. Because I feel like sometimes when you don't have that, it's kind of like, well, what are we kind of doing? Like, we kind of want to do this or whatever. But when you can actually say it out loud and then other people, like, explain it to other people, like, you hear that, you know, for the first time, you're like, holy shit, like, we are portraying what we're trying to do and someone else got it and explain it to somebody else. Like, that's fucking awesome. So it's kind yeah. of, you know. <laughs> right on. Having that kind of thing going yeah, on. Yeah, what is what are you trying to do with your podcast? Honestly, I was trying to break into the podcast market. I mean, just like every other podcaster out there. And I, I didn't mean to turn this into the Larry Roberts accidentally the whole tip uh, therapy session. <laughs> Fine, <laughs> I'm charging you. I'm sending you a this bill is, at the end of the is, show. This is an intervention, Larry. We've, we've, <laughs> is that what it we've is? Gathered everyone together here. Yep. And uh, we want to talk Thanks, to you about guys. your podcast. Thanks, guys. And we're going <laughs> to send you the bill, too, so it's cool. Sam, how about I have you on my show and you and I talk about it? Sounds like – sounds good to me, dude. All right. Sounds we'll see if we can set me. something up. So I'm going to turn it back over to Sarge and Frenzy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what were we talking about before we got on the <laughs> podcast topic? We uh, talked yeah, about that we before. We were just talking about comedy, comedy clubs. in general. Yeah. Where comedy is and all that stuff. I mean, I can talk about anything, guys. Whatever you want to talk about. What do you got? Uh, what do you got coming up in the very near future? Well, I'm um, I'm doing some dates. I'm on the road. I'm I'm gonna try to put together. Uh, an, I I have enough time to do an hour special. I'm just debating whether I want to be the best of everything I did, which is the old way of doing it, which was. You know, your first special, you put out your best shit. Or do I, I do, like, mostly new shit? I kind of wanted the first one to be, like, the best of everything I've ever ever done in one, you know, in one special. Then I could come back a little later very quickly with a whole new hour of greatness. I know on this last album, I, I, I didn't – I have a story about smoking crack with Robot – now he <laughs> tries to suck my dick, and I, I didn't really talk about that in this one. So there's a whole bunch of stuff I want to do. I just don't, you know, so I'm going to put together. Then I'm just working on selling shit out here, too. So that's kind of it. Like El Magical said a, a great thing to me. He's like, you want to be able to do com- comedy at 50. You don't want to have to do comedy at 50. And that always resonated with me. So now I'm working on building, you know, all the other parts, the brand, it's, you know, like uh, Punch Drunk Sports is now becoming a network and, um, you know, just building the brand and getting sponsors and all that shit. And, it's, you know, I'm blessed. Like, I, I do I talk comedy for two hours a week and I pay all my bills. So everything above that is just straight cash. You know, just, just you know, icing on the cake. And it's very a blessing. And I yeah. can get really up, really depressed if I look at, like, how – people around me are doing because i'm literally friends with people who are like the the one percent of the one percent of comedy you know and it <laughs> and that can get to you if you let it yeah it can get to you yeah if you like if i'm you not i you know it's like i got tom segura into stand-up comedy I'm the one who told him he should do it you know yeah and you guys like found him on the road or something didn't you <laughs> No, we were in a uh, we were in an improv class together, mm. and I was like, "Dude, you're really funny. Uh, you should try stand up." So I took him on the road, and I, you know, and 
he learned to do stamp, but now he's like, well, he's just selling out everything now. You know, it's like, it's fucking amazing. And those are all my friends, Duncan, Ari Shafir, all those guys. So if I, if I, I start comparing myself to them, I could easily get very depressed or I could just, you know, just be very thankful that I have what I have, which is, you know, a lot. I'm very blessed. So, you know, that's kind of what I'm working on. Just I don't want to, I'm, you know, getting, I have my own show in Vegas for a while. So I have these cha- these things I want to do in comedy and I do it. So that's mm-hmm. what I try to do. I don't want to get too serious. I feel like I just became Tony Robbins and shit. <laughs> I am so motivated right now. Oh, my God. I like, wanna... I might go run. Where are you from, Canada? <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty close, Minnesota. Oh, yeah. I love Minnesota, dude. I love it. It's a Minnesota's great state to do bomb. comedy. A- have you been to Acme? No, I do uh, I do House of Comedy. Oh, House of Comedy. Okay. At, mm-hmm. at um, the mall, right? Yeah. The, the MOA. fucking mall that they want to add yeah. more people. More th- I'm like, dude, you guys are crazy. They've added more shit already. Add another mall. To they the mall. added like a JW Marriott and some like business stuff and redid all the food courts. So they're super fancy now. Well, the one thing I do love about going to to that going to the uh, house, the Mall of America is they have Pita Pit in the Mall of America. Oh, yeah. we don't get Pita Pit anywhere else. And I fucking love Pita Pit. Do you like the breakfast ones? You ever had a no, breakfast? No, I just go breakfast straight pita? grilled chicken. Oh, straight the grilled ones chicken are good too. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Straight grilled, man. That's <laughs> all I give a shit about. I love the straight grilled. So I love it, man. I love going out there. I love touring. I love, I love being on the road, man. I love being on the road. I like they just go around and just, put, you know, it's man. It's like just put out all the content you can. That's like the thing about comedy now. It's just like. The whole, it used to be when, when I started 20 some years ago, it was all about, you know, you got to keep it till it's perfect. Then you release it. Now it's just like, dump it, dump it, dump it, dump it out, put it out, put it out, put it out. Cause all pe- people are just on their phones all the time. They can't get enough fucking information. They can't digest yeah. enough content. Right. So they constantly want content. So just keep putting out, put it out. You know, I overthink everything. It's like, no man. Just keep pushing it. And that's all you could do, man. That's all you could do is mm-hmm. just keep putting out content. And that's what I do with my YouTube. I rant. I do all that crazy shit. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I feel like I'm just yelling at you guys the whole time. <laughs> no, I th- yeah, I, th- I thought you were going into one of your rants. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> no, it's all good. Fu- <laughs> it's all good. I, uh, I, guess, I guess I could tell you some weird fucking stories of uh, – with, I, I, I'm like the Patrick Swayze of Roadhouse yes. of comedy. I'm like, I'm just, I get hired to go into fucking crazy situations. The roundhouse. And uh, yeah, like I, I, like Bill Burr has a great saying, and it's really kind of helped me in comedy. He goes, until you're famous, every gig, every gig is an away game. And then you become famous and every gig is a home game. Mm-hmm. And I like, really like that really like was like, okay. I'm not crazy. So with it, I get called into crazy gigs, man. I'm half Armenian. You know, I, I did the naughty show so I can get called into some fucking weird ass gigs, man. <laughs> so within one week, I got called in to do an Armenian preschool fundraiser. That Within what? seven days of that, I was doing <laughs> Fat Mike from No FX. Bert 50th birthday party in a sex dungeon by LAX. In Los Angeles. And, <laughs> oh, fuck. and I don't know if you guys know this, but by if you go on your Craigslist, if you go on Craigslist, you look at like uh, fucking, what's it called? Chance meeting? No, what are they called? Uh, um, it was like uh, missed, chance encounter or missed, missed connections. connections. No, something encounters, casual encounters, casual encounters. So you go to casual encounters, you'll find that the most of deviant shit happens near... The airport. <laughs> you need a quick because getaway. Dude, dudes fly in, get weird, get pegged in the ass, jump on their flight, get the fuck out. So it's this fucking probably mostly pilots. I need to leave the country immediately. Yeah, it's mostly yeah, I don't, airline yeah, pilots. I have a wife and kids. Yeah. So, so they, uh, <laughs> so this dungeon is right next to LAX, and um, 
Do you know Fat Mike from No Effects is by chance? No, no. Fat Mike. <clears throat> Fat Mike. He's uh, it's know, called No Effects. I know Skinny Mike. I. Uh, Skinny Mike. He's like this famous punk rocker. <laughs> he's like, like very famous because uh, he kind of did. He be, got this huge, huge, huge like punk rock empire, and he didn't do and never got an MTV, never got played on anything. He just kind of did it all himself. So he's he's kind of fucking famous about this. So, anyways, it's his 50th birthday party. His wife is this woman called Soma Snake Oil, and she's this famous dominatrix. Out of, yeah, dude, she's this dominatrix. If you look her up, she's fucking got some fucking crazy shit. Um, so so much snake oil. So yeah, you're looking it up. That's great. So I get. <laughs> I'm like, hey Sam, come. I want you to host Fat Mike's birthday party. Go to this dungeon. So I go there, man, and like very quickly, I realize that I am the most vanilla dude in the place. Like, I'm like a Mormon missionary in this fucking <laughs> den of iniquity. And it's just like, so I'm like, I get upstairs. It's like, okay, I'm just going to do dirty shit. But my dirty shit is vanilla for them. You know, like, I like weird shit, like being called racial slurs in bed and shit like that. Like, you know, like, but these people are in the like, like one girl told me she liked to have sex with a knife to her throat. Like, oh like God. we're talking like <laughs> fucking crazy fucking shit. <laughs> So I'm doing stand-up, man, and I'm talking, and I'm doing acting. I start getting heckled by this fucking guy that's dressed like a minotaur, like a cross-dressing <laughs> minotaur. He has, like, fucking those weird horn implants. His eyes are all tattooed black, and he's in a dress. So I'm getting heckled by him, and he's every time I take a breath, he just yells, I want to fuck your ass. And I was like, <laughs> and he get this huge laugh, and it kind of saved my act, so I... Drop the bin. I started pounding on this guy. And, uh, you know, it was like getting heckled by the line, the witch, and the wardrobe <laughs> all at one time from Narnia. <laughs> and uh, so I just get off stage and, like, dude, after the comedy goes on, they do all this dominatrix shit. And, these, and like, this really gorgeous chick just, like, walks over fucking broken glass and lays in it like it's nothing. And then at the end, this, this, uh, this black none and this white pastor come up on stage and they brand the chick right on stage brand her Holy like i shit. could smell it and i was like fuck <laughs> this ain't fucking kansas toto you know what i'm saying like it's fucking it was the craziest gig i've ever done dude oh the God. craziest gig i've ever done man i hope you it was paid nuts. for that one i did but it was still, I would have done it even if I didn't get paid. Yeah, it sounds it was, fun. It sounds like, holy shit, thank you. I'm all about what weird shit can I get into? <laughs> what weird shit can I? Because everything, it's like Doug Stanhope. He, there was a time where he would do anything for a joke. He would go up to see, like he once did uh, gay phone sex on acid. Just to see <laughs> what it was like, like if he could get a bit about it. Uh, and dude, it's he's you know. So I've always tried to do that shit, you know, and just try the weirder the shit, the better. I'll go into a bad situation if I can get a nice joke out of it. Yeah, how great is that <laughs> to be able to be able to just uh, you know put yourself in fucked up situations like that, and 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 basically it's it's work. You're working. That's your yeah. job. That's your job. And tell a fucking <laughs> funny ass joke, dude. Yeah. And try to get a laugh off it. Yeah, man. Beautiful. For sure, dude. I fucking yeah. It's That's craziness, awesome. dude. Yeah. Uh, well, um, what do you think? Should we wrap this thing up? You got to get out of here, don't you? Yeah, I gotta go. Uh, I'm having dinner with this. Do you guys know Tiffany Haddish? Have you ever heard of Tiffany Haddish? Yep. The dude, that girl's gonna blow the fuck up, man. What's you watch some good. She's uh, she's so fucking funny. She's on um, Doug Benson's new show, uh, Higher Court. Have you seen that? Where he gets baked out of his skull and he does. Um, no. He's a judge. It's on. It's on uh, Comedy um, Central. It's really funny. What's it called? Higher Court. Oh yeah. Higher Court. Gotta okay. check that out. Dumb. Yeah, it's really fucking <laughs> that funny, sounds, dude. That sounds perfect. A perfect position for Doug, a judge. <laughs> yeah, a baked judge, a right? baked judge. 
Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. So my new man. album, my new <laughs> album is available um, on iTunes. It's the Diabolical, and check out the movie Dying Laughing. And um, yeah, man. I hope this was entertaining. I feel like I was just lecturing you kids. You fucking kids. You fuckers. Get, get off, off my lawn. Fucking lawn. Yeah, dude. Just totally. Oh, shit. No. I just was, like I took over and I'm going to apologize for that. I didn't mean to do that at all. Like, we're all just apologizing. Just stop. Like, hey, the weird hey, you know, one. I'm, I'm really sorry, sorry about that, guys. Yeah. <laughs> secure, we're not, well, I'm not sorry about shit. So We're going to have oh, to not look talk at you. for a while. Yeah, Minnesota <laughs> don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, Minnesota nice. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Minnesota has the highest rate of uh, teenage prostitution. Congratulations! Mm, perfect. We really? It's about time. Yeah, yeah. Can I crash at your place, Sarge? We've, There's yeah, nothing we've... else to do in the winter except drink and have sex. Apparently, we've been one hundred percent, dude. <laughs> All you do is, I love Minnesota. It's great. <laughs> it's it a is hell of a state. Sweet. Yeah, it is a hell of a state. I love it. Get weird, Minnesota. Get weird. <laughs> yeah. How much did you guys hate when they're like, feeling Minnesota? <laughs> Go fuck yourself. It's, it's not that. Oh, it's not that. And would you, did you guys like ban fucking Soundgarden from the state for a while? They're no. Like, fuck you. You don't want to come here? <laughs> no, I think we actually liked it. I think we get more pissed when people are like, oh, Oh, yeah, isn't that like where they the movie Fargo? Like Minnesota's in Fargo, or Fargo's in Minnesota, right? Like that movie Fargo, you know? And you're like, so no. funny, dude. Okay. It's Fargo so is funny. not in Minnesota. Fargo is not Minnesota. I haven't even seen Fargo. It's North Dakota. It's North Dakota. <laughs> yeah, people should know that. People they should. should know that. Yeah. Sam, one more, one more quick question. This weekend, who do you have? You got Tony or you got Khabib? Uh, I would like. I love Tony. I love Tony. I love his style. He just has that fucking Scarface attitude. Like you know, he's like his eyes are somewhat cross-eyed, and he just <laughs> talks like he's coked out of his fucking skull. <laughs> but Khabib fought a bear, dude. After you fought a bear, how are you afraid of a man? Right, right. And, you know, it's like it, uh, here's a here's. I think Tony's only hope is that Khabib has such an ego because I think the UFC is pushing people to uh, be strikers that that I think that they're gonna he's gonna feel the pressure to have to strike and that's where he's gonna get in trouble instead of just taking Ferguson down and just with his sambo and fucking him up. I think I, this is a great card. Now we'll see. We'll see. Not. Usually when the UFC cards, you think it's going to be great, they're not. When you don't know what the, who the fuck's fighting, you're like, God damn, that was a good card. Dude, is that not the truth? 99% of the time, that is the exact fucking truth. But this yeah. is another card that on paper looks beautiful. So I mean, I'm pretty stoked Overeem about it. Overeem versus Mark Hunt. That should Fuck be a yeah. good fight. Throw back to the I'll, pride days? Fuck yes. Yeah, I don't see how they fucked that up, but you never know. You never know. Well, Hunt's all pissed off, so I think he wants to go in there and fuck somebody up. So. Well, the UFC fucked themselves. You're seeing it right now with why the show, why the sport is stagnant, is that they've limited the money these guys can make by getting rid of sponsorship. Yep. You should have been encouraging sponsorship, so you don't have to pay these motherfuckers. But you got so fucking greedy, and you, they kept the fucking money. It's just ridiculous. You, if you don't want to pay them to fight, let them make as much money as they can in sponsorship. These guys have to make money or the sport doesn't grow. It just right. doesn't grow. And, I mean, you've you seen know? that. You, and, and here we go again, Sarge. I'm taking over. I'm sorry. But no, you've, seen that in the fucking, you've seen that in the fucking UFC. You, you, you rarely see any new fighters. When you do, they're very lower-level guys. They're lower on the card. Hell, they fight on, 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 on Fight Pass for God knows how long, right? And then you yeah. just keep rehashing, 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 uh, rematch after rematch. Fucking George St. Pierre just came back, right, this week. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? But, yeah, he <laughs> left because the money was shit and everybody was juicing. And I don't really give a fuck if you're juicing. I mean, I that's don't either. just me. I don't really give a fuck. But, you know, it is what it is, dude. I just think they really, that, that fucking Reebok deal really, oh, it really them. hurt their fucking, their, yeah. their, um, their brand. marketability. Yeah, their, their brand, their everything. The whole aspect of the show is stagnant. 
I mean, we need, these new announcers, you got rid of Goldie. Now, I, I I can deal without some of Goldie's catchphrases. I've been hearing them for 25 years Yeah, but years how now. they treated Goldie was... Oh, re- shit. ...was ridiculous, man. It was just... It was no no even goodbye. No, just disappear. Poof. Yeah, yeah. But the lead-up to the show stupid, with Goldie's voice stupid. was perfect. Um, I, you know, I, I don't mind who they've been using... Um, God, what the hell is his name? He, he's been doing the fight pass uh, shows and the fight night. Yeah, shows. yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Anyways, you know he he's all he's all right, but he's not. He doesn't have the energy that Goldie has. So I think I don't know. that Rogan's been a little more calm than he normally is. Yeah, like he has. told him not to yell, and I think they, you know because you hear them keep complaining about hype guys, the, the fight hypers, and it's like, well, that's what people want. The, uh, the biggest mistake they will do is take away the underground outlaw version of the sport. Exactly. Where these guys are allowed to be crazier than everybody else when nobody else can. And it's like, if you get rid of that, your sport just goes. And here's what's really going on. The UFC has for- forced boxing to put out great fights, and the boxing fights are fucking amazing now. They're yeah, really they're, they're good boxing matches out there. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Head. All right, so Wonder Boy or, or, or Woodley? Uh, I think. I mean, I think Woodley's going to win. I just think he needs to ah. shut up with the racism. I just think it's just uh. stupid. <laughs> Cry, crying about racism is stupid in in that thing. Just it was a close fight. People liked it. They want to see it again. You haven't earned any. Like, yes, you're the champion, but you hadn't. Def- that was your first time defending it. You got defended a lot before you start. <laughs> asking to be treated like certain ways. I mean, right. it's just the truth, dude. I mean, you know, it's like when you look at John Jones and Gustafson, you know, that was like his eighth defense. He has the right to be like, I want to fight that guy again right now. I, I beat him. <laughs> you move on. It's not your first fight. The guy was his first defense. It was close. Right. People want to see it again. That's how it goes. I, I, I got Wonder Boy, so we'll just leave it at that. I'm fine. I could see it going that way, too. <laughs> I thought he was gonna fuck him up, but he didn't. So I did too, and I was so mad. I was so mad that he he just he didn't he didn't go in. He didn't attack. He didn't let loose. He was afraid Dude. of the takedown. It seemed like and uh, I don't Holly know. Holmes fucked me, not literally, figuratively. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, congrats. <laughs> off of uh, like, yeah, yeah, buddy. <laughs> it's been a whole different podcast, and that's all I talk about. Yeah. <laughs> so you fucked Holly Holmes. Yep. Um, she yeah. lost. She lost. I had a fuck. I do parlays all the time because we have a sponsor. It's a yeah. betting thing. I do parlays all the time. I finally made it all the way to the final fucking fight with all of them correct. And she just Dude. lost. I couldn't believe she came up short. I really couldn't. I did not expect it. But she's got some of the same issues. The same won't let it go. She's phenomenal. But she won't fucking let it go. And it makes me so mad. I think that she is. Um, I think she can't. Her, she's she can't hurt people with her punches. I think that's a big problem. No. Yeah, that's she, exactly right. Let's go. Yeah, so I just don't think she can. She can hurt anybody. So she's a pick and pop person, and you know, uh, Ronda Rousey just ran right into her, and that's how she beat her. Like my friend says, she's going to be the um, the Buster Douglas of MMA. Uh, probably, you know? Sam. Are you getting in your car right now? It sounds like you're getting in your car. I'm I'm walking my dog downstairs, but it's all good. <laughs> all right, well, Sam. Um, thanks for being with us, man. This has been uh, this has been great. We had fun. Anytime, dude. Uh, happy New Year again! And uh, real quick, I just want to tell you that uh, the Raiders are going to murder everybody in the playoffs. You guys think we're down? You think we're out? This is what we wanted. We didn't want to win today. We wanted to play a game. Buys are for pussies, okay? Huh? We want to play. You guys are in trouble. We're going to destroy Houston. We are going to destroy Houston. We're going to go in there. We're going to kick the Texans' ass so badly that we're going to hurt the Rockets, too. James Harden's going to be crying. Crying worse than when Khloe Kardashian left him. It's gonna be murder. Okay, that was our guest, Sam Tripoli, the one and only Sam Tripoli. Yeah, he's amazing. And our guest host, Larry Roberts, one of a kind. 
also that, amazing. <laughs> that was a fun episode. That was uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, I enjoyed that thoroughly. Sam's an anim- animated guy. Yeah. He uh, he definitely did not disappoint. There was not a moment where uh, I was not interested in everything he was saying. Right, and also <laughs> like super genuine and, and nice person too. Like Aww. has a good heart. Well, oh, that's, got I get kind of. I get kind. No, I just get like you know sensitive um, sometimes. And uh, thank you to Larry Roberts uh, for standing in with us and uh, contributing. Once again, being our Larry. guest host. Yeah, he's he's a popular one on our show. Yep. Uh, so uh, yes, thank you to both of you. And um, who we got coming up, Frenzy? Next week, on Monday, the 6th of March, we have Brad Scott. Brad Scott. Brad. Um, he is a host, one of the hosts of the Showdown podcast, mm-hmm. <clears throat> where they talk about like movies and, and things like that. They have like these Survivor series that they do. Yep. It's a good show. Uh, the very next day, on the 7th, we have comedian Frank Roche. 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 Yeah, we still have Rochi. to like, confirm how we we'll pronounce his last name. <laughs> um, and then on the 8th, we have Nicole Apellian from Alone on the History Channel. So mm-hmm. Season 2. Season 2, yeah. Badass survival chick. Holy uh, cow, we got a full week. Plus, on Friday, we have Darren Chase, comedian, yep. Minnesota native, out in L.A., loves Little Caesars Pizza like yeah, so much. He's he's proactively going after trying to become a sponsor for yeah. Little Caesars. Like he's doing all these these little like promos for yep. them for free. Mm-hmm. Just hoping that uh that they'll be like, All right dude, here you go. Yeah. You're a sponsor, why not? I think he should mix in Darren, if you're gonna ever listen to this episode, you should mix in some crazy bread with your pizza. Yeah, you need to promos. you need to implement some crazy bread yeah. into your into your little promos there. Mm-hmm. It's not all about the pizza, Darren. Well, mostly, but Don't, I mean, the pizza crazy bread is there, a big deal. Sad. <laughs> I want to be involved in these little commercial things that he's doing. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's what we got coming up on the show. You can uh, find us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Go mm-hmm. and like it, subscribe to it, love it. Do all the, the the interactions that are involved. All the things. And uh, our website, frenzy. www.sargeapproved.com. Damn right. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, Twitter at Melissa Frenzy. Okay. Facebook Melissa Frenzy. And we've got uh, you can find our episodes on our website mm-hmm. and on Spreaker. We're on iTunes, uh, YouTube. You just type in "Stars Approved," you'll find us. It's not that hard to yeah. figure it out. Just do it. And while you're online, mosey on over to National Survival Center, our sponsor. They uh, they have all kinds of badass survival gear. Um, and pretty much anything under the sun if you're looking to do a little camping outing, if you're looking to stock up for the apocalypse, um, or you're just an avid outdoorsman, or you think you're a badass survival expert. Yeah, or you just have a bunch of money and you don't really know what to do with it. Just yeah. buy some, some stuff. It's cheaper than all the big box stores and mm-hmm. probably anywhere you're going to find it on the internet. It's all the top of the line name brand shit, hand tested, yep. um, and free shipping on pretty much everything. So go check them out. Go do it. NationalSurvivalCenter.com or SurviveDon'tSuffer.com. That is their motto. <laughs> Frenzy, National Survival Center. Survive. Don't do what Sarge just did. Don't suffer. <laughs> Don't suffer. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, am I forgetting anything? Should we wrap this bitch up? Yeah, we're done. Let's do it. All right. We're done, people. We got to go. What are we going to play this out with? Uh, it is called... Do, do, do. Okay, the band is called Yeg... Yeg Yeg Hickian. Oh. Y I'm gonna spell it because <laughs> I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. Y E G H I K I A N. Yeah, Yeg Hickian. Uh this was a personal request by Sam Tripoli himself, so he's our guest and the man of the hour, so we gotta honor it. Yeah, and if we butchered uh, the name, we apologize. Which I'm sure I did. <laughs> uh and the song that I chose is called Thunder Stealer. Ooh, I like it. Yeah. So here it is. Thanks for being with us, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Later, fuckers. Bye.